High school students Emma and Dean go on a school trip to Trinidad. However, they get separated from the group and get stranded on a remote island. Having no one else but each other, they have to work together for a better chance of surviving as their feelings get in the way. One morning, Emma, an organized and responsible student, starts her day early and prepares for school. She checks her scheduled calendar of productive activities before she leaves. Meanwhile, Dean, an introverted and troublesome teenager, gets up from bed, heads to the restroom, then plays video games as his father, Jack, reminds him not to be late. Upon arriving at school, Emma and her younger sister, Stacy, prepares to leave the car when their mother, Barbara, drops them off. When the sisters leave, Stacy enviously comments on how her older sister is the favorite child. Afterward, Emma meets her best friend Lizzie in the hallway. While talking, a famous quarterback player, Stephen Sullivan, greets Emma. Lizzie feels ecstatic about the young man's gesture and teases her friend. In class, Mr. Christensen, their teacher, announces that the bus will leave at 7 a.m. sharp the next day for their trip to Trinidad Sanctuary. The teacher gets interrupted by Emma arriving late in class as Dean unintentionally bumps into her, calling her prom queen. While Christensen explains the importance of their trip, Lizzie tells Emma that Dean probably got on the trip due to his father's money before giving Dean a silly look. Then, Christensen announces that the last three days of their trip will be exploring the island's culture, which excites everyone. During lunch, Lizzie shares with her friends what happened happened with Emma and Steven earlier that morning. She insists the two should be close during their one-week stay in Trinidad. However, the responsible student tells Lizzie they should focus on the trip. While Lizzie discusses the carnival in Trinidad for their trip, Emma catches a glimpse of Dean cutting an apple with his knife, which annoys Lizzie. Their friend, Helen, claims she used to be schoolmates with Dean and adds that he's a good person. Even if Lizzie disapproves of it, Jude, on the other hand, agrees with Helen. Shortly after, Miss Collier, a teacher, arrives and takes Dean's knife. While Dean remains unbothered, she brings him to the principal's office for violating the school rules. Lizzie insists to her friend that Emma shouldn't be dating boys like Dean since a famous quarterback is showing interest in their friend. The following morning, Emma finishes packing her clothes for the trip and thanks to her mother and father, Phil, for allowing her to go. Meanwhile, Jack reminds Dean of his efforts to get his son a place on the trip, despite his recent trouble at school. The young man begs to differ, but eventually, he decides to go. At school, Christensen calls out for everyone to board the bus. Barbara tells Emma to be safe as Dean hears the exact words from his father. While boarding, Stephen asks Emma how she's doing. When he leaves, Lizzie teases her, but Emma doesn't show any interest. Hours later, the students arrive at Trinidad. Collier announces they can enjoy themselves for a few hours and meet at dinner, as their program will formally start the next day. Shortly after, Emma and her friends go to the pool, coming across Stephen. While having a great time, Emma notices Dean looking at her from afar on a balcony. Stephen grabs Emma by the waist as Dean walks away from what he sees. The following day, the students start their project to help build a school for the less fortunate children of Trinidad. Dean does a stunt, which annoys Stephen, and murmurs to Emma that Dean will ruin the trip for everyone. That evening, Jude enthusiastically announces to her friends that Stephen invited them to a carnival party on a local boat. Emma abruptly ends the call with her parents and lies to them about Miss Collier calling the lights out. The responsible student has second thoughts, but her friends demand she goes with them, convincing her. Later, the girls arrive at the party, and they excitedly board the boat. After a while, Emma looks for Helen during the party, but unexpectedly finds Stephen kissing someone else. Upset, she ignores it and walks away. As Emma passes by Dean, he asks her if she and Stephen are together. Annoyed, Emma answers that it's none of his business. Moments after, the police arrive, announcing everyone to move to the front of the boat. Suddenly, Emma accidentally falls into the water, but no one notices her except for Dean. Upon hearing Emma's call for help, Dean immediately jumps into the water, and they swim toward a dinghy nearby. Dean cuts the dinghy rope connecting to the boat because he doesn't want to get in more trouble. Emma wants to return to the boat, but he insists they will be fine and follow the ship later. However, an enormous storm is coming their way. Dean and Emma struggle to follow the boat as they discover that the dinghy doesn't have any motor. Suddenly, a colossal wave approaches them as they firmly hold on to the dinghy. The following day at the hotel, the trip is now cancelled due to last night's party. Lizzie tells Collier that Emma didn't go home that previous night and thought she was with someone else. The teacher clarifies if this is true, and Lizzie asserts that Emma isn't the type of person to bail. She adds that her best friend was last seen on the boat that night. Meanwhile, on the dinghy, Emma and Dean drifted to the Caribbean Sea. Dean checks his phone, but unfortunately, it got wet. He suggests that Emma uses hers instead, but she can't find any reception. At the hotel, Christensen conducts an attendance check and doesn't find Dean. In the middle of the sea, Emma tells Dean how they should have just followed the boat. 
He objects, reasoning they only have one paddle, eventually leading them to argue. Then she spots an island in the middle of the conversation, so Dean paddles toward it. At the hotel, Christensen and the police interrogate Emma's friends. Collier asks if there's any way to find the two students, but the police says it's more likely for them to find their way back. Lizzie worries because Emma isn't an adventurous person at all. Paddling their hearts out, Dean and Emma finally make it to the island. Emma checks her phone for the reception but still gets nothing. Then, Dean finds a flare gun on the dinghy and keeps it. Concurrently, Jack receives the news about his son's disappearance. Immediately, he goes to the school and meets Barbara. At the same time, Phil hurriedly enters the campus. Worried, the parents discuss the issue with the principal but end up disappointed with what he can offer. Meanwhile, Emma and Dean explore the island to find shelter. Deeper into the woods, they come across a blue lagoon. Dean finds this a fantastic sight and asks the young lady to take a picture of him. However, she refuses. She worries about getting in more trouble, possibly affecting her acceptance to her dream university, but Dean thinks her reasoning is lame. After a few hours, they reach the island's edge, seeing no one. Hopeless, the two decide to retrace their path as the girl worries how they'll survive. Then, Dean finds a cave and borrows Emma's phone for a flashlight. As they investigate it, numerous bats are coming out of the place. The two run away and get soaked in the lagoon nearby. Right after, they return to shore, but their dinghy is now gone, only to find one life jacket ashore. Persistent in going home, they circle the island to recover the dinghy but fail. The sun is setting as Dean and Emma take a rest. The young lady tells Dean to fire the flare twice to call for help, but he seems to be fixating on the view before them. She gets curious and asks Dean why he's in deep thought, but he changes the topic. Suddenly, the young lady remembers the food she packed inside her bag. She proudly finds it and gives some food to Dean. Meanwhile, at the airport, their parents patiently wait for their flight to Trinidad to find their children. At night, the two teenagers camp on the beach side. Emma asks Dean why he calls her a prom queen, and he explains that she's a perfect girl in an ideal world. Suddenly, she hears the twig snapping and Dean reassures that they'll be fine. Hopeful of finding reception, Emma checks her phone but finds none. Her companion notices her feeling cold, so he offers the young woman a shirt. In a reassuring voice, Emma says their family will rescue them. Shortly after, she hears a distant rustling. Morning comes and Dean finds Emma at the shore writing SOS on the sand. He asks where her phone is but finds out the battery is dead. Then, Dean goes for a swim as Emma can't help but look at him. At the hotel, Christensen discusses with the missing teenager's parents that the police are now searching and found a missing dinghy on the boat. With their children missing for two days, Jack offers money to search faster. Christensen apologizes for this, but Barbara insists they help find their children. Moments later, on a call, Stacy asks her parents for updates on her missing sister. Phil responds to her in a sad tone that they haven't found her yet. At the island, Emma fetches some water from a nearby river and hears strange noises. Uncomfortable with her surroundings, she decides to leave for her safety. She then goes back to putting SOS on the sand as Dean finds himself frequently looking at her. The two continue to feed themselves with anything they can find on the island. Eventually, they create a makeshift hut. Tired from the day, Emma finds Dean sleeping. She joins the young man as he faces her and puts his hand on her waist. She finds this comforting, so she leaves it be. The following day, while Emma showers at the lagoon, Dean asks for sunscreen. She tells him to look in her bags, but he informs her that he can't find any. Anxious, Emma mentions that something else is on the island. Back in the hotel, Barbara worries for Emma as she watches the news broadcast about her missing daughter. As Phil packs his stuff to return for Stacy, Barbara is still hopeful, reassuring that they will find their daughter. Phil comforts his wife as he tightly holds her in his arms. With the search now officially called off, Jack uses a helicopter to search the next day, and Barbara joins him. Back at the island, Emma tells her companion about how she misses her family. While she tries to light a fire, Dean suddenly finds a skull nearby. In shock at what they're seeing, Emma cries about their situation and feels hopeless. Dean reassures her that they will get home if they stay together. Reassured, he proceeds to kiss Emma passionately. Night falls and the two spend an intimate time. Strangely, Emma cries and mentions how much she misses home. The sun rises and Emma wakes up alone. She calls out for Dean but doesn't find him around. Concerned, she makes her way into the forest to search for him. Fortunately, she finds him, making a proper burial of the remains of the person they found the other day. In a state of confusion, Emma asks Dean what is going on. He tells her that he doesn't need anything from her. Disappointed, she tries to convince him to open up to her. However, she accidentally falls and gets wounded in the knee, which Dean immediately treats. Emma remembers their situation, and Dean reassures her they will be alright. She then tells him that they both need hydrotherapy. After finishing their bath at the lagoon, Dean tells his companion how his mother died in a car crash, with him finding out three days after being in a coma. Emma listens closely and comforts him that none of it was his fault. Rain falls and Dean finds joy in it. Emma feels as happy as he is and they dance in the rain for some time. Dean gives his friend a flower and they intimately kiss each other. 
Nearly a month later, the news officially calls off the search for Dean and Emma. In front of the school are Emma's friends witnessing the news reporter, believing that their friend is still out there. Similarly, Barbara is persistent in finding her daughter and goes back on a helicopter with Jack. To cover many areas, they send out flyers in town containing information about their children. However, Jack convinces Barbara that they have done enough to find Emma and Dean. With the utmost sadness, the mother returns home without any leads of her missing daughter. At the shore, Dean tells Emma of a green flash that his mother used to say to him, which appears right on the horizon line just as the sun comes down and how he has never seen it. Weeks pass as the teenagers enjoy the nature surrounding them. At sea, they dive and have a great time. With so much affection, the two continue spending passionate moments together. Afterward, Emma comments on how different he is at school and admits she's been interested in him. Just like her, Dean confesses he occasionally watches her at school because he admires her. In the middle of the forest, Emma sleeps. An aircraft approaching makes a sound nearby, waking her up. Dean notices as well and he rushes to the shore to get the flare, but doesn't find it. Emma catches up to him, but the plane is too far to hear them shouting. In disbelief, Emma checks their hut for the flare but doesn't find it. She believes that someone else is on the island, stealing their belongings. Days pass and the two still haven't been rescued. In their hut, they discuss how they should go deeper into the forest to survive. Suddenly, a growling sound interrupts their conversation. Dean heads to the forest and searches for the creature. Emma worries for him, so she follows him into the woods. Dean turns to his left and finds a black panther. He runs away from the animal as fast as he can, but he falls to the ground. Shortly after, Emma arrives where Dean is, holding a knife covered in blood, with the black panther lifeless. Throughout the many weeks, life continues for everyone with the teenager still missing. Eventually, the teenagers learn to survive, hunt, and build a more robust hut in the middle of the forest. On a stone, Emma adds more marks on the number of days they've been on the island. Surviving together for a while now, Emma and Dean fall deeper in love. The next day, Emma feels sick and Dean asks if she thinks she's pregnant, but she confidently denies. To feel better, she lies down with them. While chatting, Emma's lost things are falling from above and when they look up, a monkey is throwing their missing stuff at them. Eventually, they see the flare gun and manage to retrieve it. In desperation, Emma fires the flare gun, which makes Dean mad because he wants to stay. The two argue and the responsible student walks away from him. Moments later, when Dean hunts for fish, Emma apologizes to him and they reconcile. Unexpectedly, a helicopter passes by, sighting the teenagers on the shore. The two are rescued and finally back as the news rapidly goes out. At the airport, the survivors' friends and family are glad to see them. They welcome the young survivors with warm hugs and smiles. However, the young adults are not as overjoyed as everyone else. Later on, Dean pays Emma a visit at her home. They talk about how weird it is to finally be back home. Dean leans towards her to kiss her, but she avoids it. Instead, she invites him to their homecoming party the next day. The following morning, Emma's parents give a warm speech to the rescued students at the party. Stacy asks Dean why he isn't with everyone else, and he insistently says he isn't an everybody else type of guy. Stacy comments on how her sister is popular, unlike Dean. Dean mouths at Emma to come with him, but she rejects his request, making him leave the party in disappointment. Things get back to normal, and Emma and Dean are finally back in school. Emma's popularity grows while Dean still remains lonely. Whenever they come across each other, all they can do is share glances and nothing more. Days later, the young woman tries calling Dean, but he ignores it. In Emma's room, Stacy tells her older sister how she felt seen and recognized while she was away, but later realized that she misses her sister after all. The older sister shares how amazing Stacy is, and they decide to go to prom together, strengthening their sisterly bond. The next morning, Dean visits his mother's grave and proudly says he finally saw the green flash back at the island. On prom night, Dean watches TV at home until his father interrupts, asking if his son wants to borrow a tuxedo. At the party, Lizzie approaches Emma and walks her to a surprise. Appearing in front of them is Dean, wearing a tuxedo under the rain. Upon seeing him, Emma goes out of the party and kisses Dean passionately. The two happily reunite with each other, dancing under the pouring rain. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.